Are you fat? Are you overweight or obese? Are you pre-diabetic? Or perhaps do you even already have high blood sugar to begin with and is already diagnosed diabetic? So what is metabolic syndrome? Do you have it? If so, should you be worried about it? Well, for the simple fact that metabolic syndrome is the number one killer in the world today, I insist at the very least you should get to know more about it. That is, if you want to live a longer and healthier life. Let's find the answers to those questions in this video. So stick around till the end. Hi, I'm Dr. Donna Gopper and welcome to my Low Carb Health Doctor channel. In this article I'm showing here based on the WHO Global Health Estimates as of 2019, the World Health Organization listed down the top 10 causes of death accounting for about 55% of all deaths worldwide for that year. There were three overall categories of causes of death. Uh, first would be your communicable, which included infectious and parasitic diseases. Next would be the non-communicable illnesses and third, the injuries. In my own honest opinion, here's the most important thing to note. Globally, seven out of the top 10 were non-communicable diseases of these ischemic heart disease or what is commonly known as heart attack is the world's number one killer. It accounted for 16% of all deaths worldwide. It has the largest increase in deaths since the year 2000, rising by more than 2 million to 8.9 million deaths in 2019. And trailing closely in second place is stroke. This may be either due to a block in the carotid or intracerebral blood vessel due to what we call atherosclerosis, or perhaps it may be due to an intracranial hemorrhage, most often due to high blood pressure or hypertension. And stroke was responsible for about 11% of all deaths as of 2019. And as a neurologist, stroke is among the diseases we most commonly see in our day-to-day -day clinical practice. And diabetes is now at top 9. This followed after a 70% increase in cases since the year 2000. And from its previous place at number 13, kidney diseases is now at top 10, accounting for 1.3 million deaths in 2019. What's with these kidney diseases? Most of them are complications due to kidney damage from diabetes and hypertension. So, what is common with all of these? Aren't physicians worldwide seeing the pattern? All these non-communicable diseases I've mentioned are complications due to insulin resistance, which is otherwise known as the metabolic syndrome. And two more things I haven't mentioned before, but I think is worth mentioning now. Alzheimer's disease and other dementias, as well as cancers, there have been several studies already citing how dementia is linked to brain insulin resistance. In fact, we now have the term type 3 diabetes for that. As for cancers, are you already aware of the Warburg effect? They're all in the resources page of my website, so go look for them there at www.lowcarbhealthmd.com. So let's refresh our knowledge a little bit. The Warburg effect, also known as aerobic, aerobic glycolysis, is a phenomenon in which cancer cells exhibit increased glucose metabolism and lactate production, even in the presence of oxygen. In other words, many cancer cells prefer fueling its needs with sugar or glucose. This includes breast cancer, lung cancer, colorectal gland cancer, and many others. In the brain, glioblastoma, the most common and aggressive type of brain tumor, is known to display 
the Warburg effect. So take note of this as the WHO says. It is important to know why people die to improve how people live. Measuring how many people die each year helps to assess the effectiveness of our health systems and direct resources to where they are needed most. Isn't that really interesting? Of course, the main question we need to ask is this. If most of the top 10 causes of deaths worldwide are complications related to the metabolic syndrome, what should we be doing about it? So what again is metabolic syndrome? Let's go through a brief review. Metabolic syndrome is diagnosed if you have any three or more of the following five criteria from the U.S. National Heart, Lung, Blood Institute, and the American Heart Association. First, you have abdominal obesity. Second, you have high blood pressure, which is more or less above or equal to 130 over 85 millimeters of mercury. Third, you have high triglycerides, which is above 150 milligrams per deciliter. Fourth, you have high blood sugar, above 100 milligrams per deciliter. And lastly, you have low LD, HDL. I'm flashing the cutoff for all of these criteria on screen. For the waist circumference and the HDL levels, it differs for men and women. For Asians, there is also a different recommended set of cutoff values for the waist circumference based on the International Diabetes Federation criteria. Now we know what is the root cause behind metabolic syndrome. It is insulin resistance. So what is causing insulin resistance? Of course, it's frequent elevations of insulin or what is commonly called hyperinsulinemia in our bloodstream. And what is causing hyperinsulinemia? Of course, it's very much common sense. It's very, very most often the carbohydrates in the food that we eat from day to day. There have been many studies already about this. I again refer you to my website learning resources page at www.lowcarbhealthmd.com backslash resources. I am constantly updating it. It's just that many physicians worldwide are not even aware of it because sadly, most of us depend on our learnings from the medical conferences and conventions we attend. And this pharmaceutical industry sponsored meetings, all these landmark studies in low carbohydrate nutrition are almost never ever heard of. Why? These studies are almost never presented in any platform for one very simple reason. Not one pharmaceutical company will sponsor them because they will not earn anything from it. In fact, they will stand the risk of losing their billions of dollars of sales from cardiometabolic prescription drugs, mostly for diabetes and hypertension, even at the mere mention of the fact that, yes, metabolic syndrome and its manifestations can be reversed with a strict low-carbohydrate diet. And together with all other low-carb medical practitioners out there, we can all attest that we have many, many patients whose medications for hypertension, diabetes, and other metabolic syndrome-related symptoms, we all have successfully either decreased or perhaps even stopped or deprescribed all because of one simple thing. The patient successfully complied with a low carbohydrate regimen and by the way for watching this video and subscribing to my channel and helping promote my fight metabolic syndrome advocacy I am giving out this gift for you it's the free metabolic syndrome e-guide you just go to www.lowcarbhealthmd.com slash metabolic syndrome and claim your copy from there so, back to metabolic syndrome. So, what can we do to reverse metabolic syndrome? If you're a long-standing diabetic and your metabolic syndrome or insulin resistance has already been there for quite some time, and you're already talk, uh, taking a lot of medications, then reversing your metabolic syndrome may not be that 
AC. But for the greatest majority for those whose metabolic health issues are not yet that complicated or are still early on in their metabolic syndrome journey, such as those who are still pre-diabetic and don't have irreversible kidney damage, then reversing your metabolic syndrome condition should be your topmost priority. Because if you don't, as sure as the sun rises tomorrow morning, I'm sure I will be telling you this, you will definitely have greater and greater chances of suffering from heart attack, stroke, and other life-threatening diabetes complications. So, if you don't want to become one of the World Health Organization's death statistics due to metabolic syndrome, which in my honest opinion is the world's number one killer today, and I have to repeat that, it's the world's number one killer today, and if you have plans of hopefully living a longer and healthier life ahead, then this is perhaps my best advice to you so far. Learn more about low-carb nutrition and how it can address your metabolic syndrome. You visit my website www.lowcarbhealthmd.com That's www.lowcarbhealthmd.com Or alternately, you can log on to my other URL www.lowcarbneurologist.com That's www.lowcarbneurologist.com You go to all my resources there and learn your way back to your own metabolic don't forget to subscribe to my Low Carb Health Doctor channel. You like and share this video with your friends in all your social media platforms so they may all learn from it. And I'll see you all in my next video.